and welcome back. This is Baller Scuba with more Let's Play on the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness, Episode 3. When we last left off, we started the game, and we went all the way through Pelican Bay. And I think I got used to the battle system. So, of course, they made it a little bit more complicated with additional classes. I also lowered the volume a little bit. Hopefully, uh, it, the balance is a little bit better these days. This game is exceptionally loud, so hopefully... I have toned it down enough. Let's take a look at the classes that I have available to us. I think we have already uh, gone over their descriptions, so now I just get to choose. We'll start with Gabe. Gabe is probably a good place to start. We have to make him the Tube Samurai. It just fits him so well. He was the Tube Samurai in the comics, so we will stick with Tube Samurai on Gabe. For our scholar, I feel like a gentleman works out quite nicely that does look good hobo sounds terrible to be honest with you and then for our genius we will have uh, element store i feel like that works out the best oh and before i forget i did want to move that magic ring over to gabe since he does have something that he can use magic on every turn of course now that i've done that you watch taiko get better magic watch that's going to happen all right so let's move forward and we will go to our destination here that we were told to go to oh so reminiscent right now shannon the shrine maiden welcome to the atelier of the dowager praxess seekers and speakers of truth each statue in this holy place tells a story. If you would understand the sacred rites of the seamstress and the power she is willing to bestow upon the humble possessors of her divine pins, enter. Wait, you have to be humble to use these class pin things? That might be a problem for some people that I know. I'm thinking of a specific person. What? I'm the humblest. I've mastered the elder art of braggadocium. Humility. There we go. A form of humility so subtle and advanced that bragging about my humility actually increases it. It just meant that you have to own a class pin in order to use it. Sorry, I was just trying to maintain the proper sort of ruined temple atmosphere. Ahem. Yes, well, thank you. It was great. Gabriel nods with tremendous energy. Totally, it cranked up the ambiance for reals. Explore the atelier to learn more about the various classes that you can gain and use in your quest. When you're done here, head back to the Starling Developments Detective Agency. It'll be fun. I am interested in these classes. I feel like I don't know much about them. Oh, I bet it's the statues. All right, so let's take a look at this Tube Samurai. I just realized, oh, there's the Tube Samurai. It's the statues. Statue of a Tube Samurai. When the seamstress was still quite young, a wandering samurai visited her village. Inspired by the samurai's supreme mastery of self and intrigued by the mystic cylinder at his side, totally not a wrapping paper tube, the seamstress set out on a journey of enlightenment. She climbed tall mountains. She withstood the pressures of pounding waterfalls. She listened to both the young and the old. And then, when her journey was done, enlightenment had been achieved. The pin of the tube samurai mysteriously appeared on her robe. Like it's a merit badge. Followers of the Tube Samurai practice a highly disciplined form of physical combat. Through the use of various stances, they can boost their capabilities. Great care should be taken in choosing the best stance for each situation. Great. I'm going to screw that one up. I'll try, though. I will try. Over here, we have... What is this, the hobo? Can I, can I look at it? They're not letting me look at it. Apparently, I can't do anything with that yet. Maybe I don't have access to it. We'll just go up the left then. We'll do it that way. Uh, this is a statue of a Crabomancer. The origin of the Crabomancer pin is quite simple. For you see, the seamstress cared more for power than she did for seafood. Wielders of the Crabomancer pin value defense over all else. In fact, they can even leverage their mighty defense as a weapon. Try and wrap your head around that. Uh, I'm thinking Goofy and Kingdom Hearts right now, to be honest with you. The statue retreats in sm into Smug's Islands. So they're very defensive. No, I said I was going to go up around the left first, didn't I? So we're going to stick to that. A statue of a gentleman. A piece of advice. If you see a seamstress of the Dowager Praxess, and you try to open the door for her, and then she says that she's got it, she's kind of a sorceress or whatever, so doors aren't that big of a deal, 
but you just stand there holding the door open in a sort of a smug way, and you make her repeat herself, you should start running because she's probably going to turn you into a pin. This chivalrous pin has its uses, though uh, wearers find themselves inexplicably concerned with the well-being of others. That concern can manifest itself in a number of ways, from healing and assisting their allies to ridding the world of evil with a well-aimed smack of a cane. And I feel like that does suit uh, Tycho, even though he's not necessarily a healer. And then here we have a statue of a cordwainer. I was given to understand my shoes would be ready by noon today, the seamstress. The cordwainer pin bestows much more than just the ability to craft artisan's shoes. Practitioners gain incredible speed, the ability to interrupt and slow enemies, plus shocking, deeply inhumane shoe-based attacks. That actually sounds awesome. I kind of want to have a cordwainer now. And the statue of a slacker. The slacker pin began, began its life as the seamstress's son, Josh. Year after year, she urged the slacker to follow into her, in her footsteps, or, or any footsteps, really, or do anything. Year after year, he refused as he wallowed in his own self-indulgent idleness. idleness. If I could speak, it would help. Finally, in a fit of rage, the seamstress declared, Blood or no, the enemy of industry is my enemy as well, as she wrote, wove her art, morphing the young boy of 34 into another pin. She regretted it instantly, of course, but it was a great-looking pin, which took the edge off. She felt that peace of mind, which comes only after a difficult decision has been faced head-on and wisely dealt with. The slacker is one of the less practical pins forged by the seamstress, yet it is not completely devoid of use. The Dowager Praxess frequently call upon its laid-back vibe for relief when the stress of life becomes unbearable. The seamstress once remarked that her son was full of hidden potential, but that is, but is thought that this was merely an expression of motherly affection and not grounded in reality. I bet it's one of those classes that I have to level up to uh, an insane degree before it becomes useful, and then it becomes the most powerful thing in the game. I'll go ahead and spoil it. I'm thinking it's Onion Knight from Final Fantasy 3. It's probably Onion Knight from Final Fantasy 3. <laughs> Japanese 3, not, not, not the one with Terra, the one with Onion Knights. And then here we have the statue of an element store. The, stat the story of the element store and his associated saga is far too complex and involved to tell within these walls. For the full tale, please read Epic Legends of the Hierarchs, the element store saga, volumes negative three through volume rainbow 25, part seven. The short version, element stores dominate the elements and then they dominate other people with the elements. They just dominate it. If you like to burn, crush, drench, and whatever you do with air, this is your pin does sound very nice and then what's this one down here oh this is the hobo i forgot about the hobo uh one day while overseeing construction of the atelier of the dowager praxis the seamstress saw the hobo and took pity offering him a gift of a few coins the next day the same hobo returned at the head of a hobo flock like some bedraggled street priest the seamstress asked if the gathered throng would like to see a magic trick and when they said yes, she transformed their hobo pope into a rustic pin. This seemed to satisfy their appetite for tricks. Use of the hobo pin is frowned upon by the Dowager Praxis, but those who can endure its unique character will find a strong brawler unbound by the normal rules of engagement. Among the hobo's many feared techniques is its ability to inflict hoboism, a wasting disease that devours enemies bit by bit. So, I feel like if I had like a dedicated healer, the hobo could be practical, especially on Gabe, who's already kind of a brawler himself. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. And then this one still does nothing. Is there anything up the stairs? How'd you get up here? What? How did you get up here so fast? I ran all the way up to the stairs. The maiden shrugs. I was way into track at Shrine College. Interesting. We do have more to go over. We have an apocalypse. An apocalypse faced the seamstress, but he knew he could not win, for he had seen his future as a cute and stylish pin. Tycho Eluptor Brahi. The, the rhymer. The Apocalypse is the perfect pin for patient practitioners and proponents of powerful potentialities. Stacked prophecy upon prophecy, and when the Day of Judgment finally arrives, your enemies will fall, and you will have been right all along. The statue coughs nervously. 
to do anything with that one. There are some that I can see but don't have, and there's others that they're not going to let me see at all. They have to be rebuilt, I guess, when I get the pins. If you can fool yourself, you can fool anyone, the seamstress. By now you have heard many tales of her vanquished foes, but there was one opponent more wily and intractable than any other, the seamstress herself. Her power of shaping and her deep enthusiasm for its use collected fractured identities in a persona which called itself the Delusionist. Eventually she got sick of that, focused for a moment, and expelled it in pin form. Removing the pin from her mouth, she fixed it to an incredible new scarf that she just got. The abilities bestowed by this pin may seem foolish, but the truly wise will come to understand the power of self-delusion. Because they don't know if that's going to be good for me or not. No idea. Statue of a Diva, the seamstress, hated the opera. Too true story. Seriously? That's it? Yes. She... It answered? She went to the opera one time just to see if she still hated it, and she did. She determined that leaving out the front door would take about three more seconds than just turning the soprano into a pin. Guess which one she chose. Wearers of the Diva pin value themselves above all else. Can the needs of the one outweigh the many? Sure. I don't necessarily know what to do with that. We got a farmer? Statue of a gardener. Gardener. I guess not necessarily a farmer. A gardener. The seamstress came upon one of the gardeners standing in the middle of a wild field. She spoke then, saying, My people once fought upon this very ground, brother against brother, father against son, all fighting for the right to tame the earth, and hoe and plant to their heart's desire. In the end, it was their blood that nourished this very soil. That's pretty dumb, the seamstress said. Oh yeah, the garden our spat, wetting the earth. Basically, said she, and balled her fist, when she opened it, a pin stood upon a bomb. Those who take up the pin of the garden are become peerless masters of hoe-based combat, able to nick their opponent's shins and cause extensive bleeding. It is their ability to sow mystical gardens that is their true gift. These gardens bestow a number of advantages, but be warned, only one garden can exist at a time. I don't necessarily understand that last part, but this is clearly either a reference to the first two games, or it, it, it'll be straight out of the first two games later. What do we have down here? These look particularly powerful. There's a third story? I can't, I can't do anything with these. Are you kidding me? These aren't job classes. They're just, like, some of the best-looking statues in the game. Fair enough, I guess. And here we can find a masochist. The masochist fought mightily against the seamstress, but it was all to no avail. The masochist's attacks were mighty, but they came at a cost, the mortification of his own life force. The seamstress simply dodged each attack, and the masochist defeated himself. The whole thing was pretty sad. Users of the masochist pin gained great strength, but at terrible risk. You wielded at your own peril. Yeah, and masochist. Is this a lizard? Statue of a dinosaur, sir. It is! While sojourning in the lands beyond the Praxian Mountains, the seamstress found herself set upon the di by the dinosaur. Dino sorcerer. I want to say dinosaur so bad. The last member of an ancient and primal people, the dino sorcerer, used the long forgotten Saurian tongue to change into terrifying lizoids long extinct. I feel like this is a reference to Chrono Trigger. Unfazed by the immense strength and size of her transformed assailant, the seamstress realized that the dinosaur's power came at a cost, a complete lack of control. Thus armed, the seamstress anticipated the dinosaur's every move and thus secured victory over her opponent. Wielders of the dinosaur pin have been seen to change into one of three forms, the sturdy triceratops, the swift velociraptor, or the mighty T-Rex. In hushed tones, there are those who say an even more terrible form exists, though none have survived an encounter with the first three. I do like the sound of dino sorcerer. I'm trying to think what the last one would be. Is it, is it something out of one of the Jurassic Park movies? Maybe out of the recent Jurassic World that I recently saw and was disappointed in. But either way, we're going to head up. And see what we have up here. It is said that these braziers will shine upon shine with a pure light once mastery of the class pins is achieved. I wonder what will happen when every brazier brazier shines through. Not just brazier. Shannon, don't look at me like that. I wonder that too. And I'm going to find out. Seriously though, tell me. Shaden. Shannon, maiden of the shrine, does not reply. So we will master all of the pins. Um... That's now a goal of mine. 
I'll probably be doing it in bonus videos. I have a feeling it's not going to be so great for me to do it you know, early on. It's probably easier later is what I mean to say. Can we go up there? Can I look at that shrine? All right, I guess we are done here. And we will head out. We do get a little stockier out here, don't we? Oh, Uncle, in your letter you said there was something you wished to discuss. A shadow passes over Tycho's face. Indeed, child, and tonight we shall. For now, there is much to do at the office. There is? Yes, there is dust on things, mind you. And I won't stand for it. But, there, but there's always. Tonight, then. Tonight. And Claire skips off her massive wrench in tow. Ow. I'm not doing so well anymore. Wait, did they change that? Did they change? How do I? Now I've already forgotten how to deal with that. Is it start? I felt like there was a way that I could change if they were running, and I'm not sure they're running anymore. Can I go in here? And Claire is almost certainly busy creating the future. All right, can't go there anymore. Oh, did the element store thing go away? No, okay, there it is. Fine, and I can go up, which is nice. So we have to head back, find out what uh, what we can do here. Upon returning their ram to their ramshackle sanctum, the scholar and the brute begin a long and arduous study of the events that have recently transpired. It may be more appropriate to suggest that Tycho began a long and arduous study of the events that had recently transpired. Gabriel was thinking about getting a dog, or maybe a cat. Briefly, the logistics of giraffe ownership are considered. Several days pass in this way. 